All right, everyone, this is Fernando for yet a brand new movie review podcast. This one dedicated to the 1996 film called The Fan, one that I just happened to recently see during the wondrous Austin snowstorm that just happened last week. It actually gave me an opportunity to revisit a lot of films that I had seen in the past, and this is one that 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 definitely uh, was put uh, put on the queue to be able to watch afterwards. But yes, let's go ahead and let's do this quick movie review here of the 1996 film the fan now a little bit of history with regards to my association with this film i remember actually seeing it when i was really young back in theaters i actually saw it at a movie theater there while i was visiting san antonio uh, so it was an opportunity to see it there and for whatever reason it just stuck in my head with regards to what was happening in the film especially with obviously robert de niro's character named Gil, and then of course with Wesley Snipes playing the superstar baseball that he's uh, fanaticizing about, and that's with Bobby Rayburn. And so I, when I saw the movie, I just, for whatever reason, again, it stuck in my head, and then it came out on VHS, and I was able to buy a really, really cheap copy of it, which I still have to this day. And I've been a fan, no pun, in, no pun intended, of this film ever since then. In fact, so much so that I actually have not just the novel which obviously this film was based on it was written by peter abrams and then also i have the audio book and it was read by joe mantegna so pretty much i have that and then i also have the soundtrack associated with it and that was done by the wonderful absolutely wonderful hans zimmer so you could definitely again call me a fan of this movie the fan because of everything involved within it so for these movie review podcasts first i'll talk about the good and then the bad and then i'll give my overall review associated with it like in terms of stars so let's go ahead first and talk about the good i think this is definitely an underrated film this is a film that maybe it didn't quite hit its mark when it originally came out in theaters, but I think it's had a cult following of sorts. Like people have discovered it here and there, especially as it plays throughout certain parts, um, I guess, of cable and other type of streaming channels that are out there. And it's a beautifully made film. Uh, the director there, Tony Scott, he's famous for making these aesthetic looking films, the ones that have beautiful cinematography, backgrounds. I mean, you're looking at the images here now, you can see that a lot of planning went into each scene. Now, even if it was just a quick, like one second scene, a lot of planning went into it to make it look as beautiful as possible. Obviously, the story deals with a lot of ugly things, but it's definitely presented in such an amazing manner. And speaking of the story, I think the story did really well. Again, it was based on a book that was written by Peter Abrams. If you're a fan of this movie, please check out the book, buy it, rent it, whatever, and then you'll be able to see even more backstories associated with all the characters. In fact, there's a huge amount of deleted scenes, if you could call it that, that are within the book that go just on a huge tangent. Like, for example, that radio personality lady played by Ellen Barkin, I think her name was Jill, she has a whole subplot where she plays almost like a detective throughout the entire movie, if uh, or at least in the book, and then she's trailing and figuring out like who essentially is this stalker of Bobby Rayburn and who he is and trying to find out you know what's happening. And then also there's another subplot involving... Bobby Rayburn's wife, and then also going through a divorce on his end, which kind of mimics, of course, the divorce that um, that that Robert De Niro's character is going through within the, the within the uh, film, and then also the novel as well. And yeah, the story definitely plays a lot of important scenes. It's very rich in characters. The dialogue is very memorable as well. I think there's even even the quiet scenes seem to have very impactful moments, and you definitely get to see that there was a lot of care given into each of these scenes. And then um, the direction was, of course, top notch by the late Tony Scott. I say late because unfortunately, he was someone that committed suicide. He actually jumped from one of the bridges there, I believe, in San Francisco. And when that happened, uh, he just took his life. I think it was something involving some kind of terminal disease that he had. I may be wrong on that part, but it was shortly after this uh, film came out, like a couple of years later. So this is a great film, at least to honor him by um, as far as what occurred, but he did a wonderful job when it came to uh, what was uh, associated with this movie, and what a great way, in other words, to to have one of his last films be this great. And then also the music is fantastic. I was mentioning that by Hans Zimmer. I think this is one of his earlier works. It's definitely underrated too. A lot of people um, discover his music here afterwards. I mean, he's obviously famous for a lot of the superhero films that are out there right now, 
But no, if you want to hear a really, really great soundtrack, you should get it from the fan. What's interesting is the fan soundtrack is one giant track for all of the score together. It's like a 20-minute track, and it contains pretty much all of the important cues, all of the important um, uh, symphonic music that plays throughout multiple scenes of the fan. The rest of it is like some weird gangster rap and also techno type music and in some cases really heavy metal rock like almost like death metal music so that's the rest of the soundtrack but here the important part to me is the music by Hans Zimmer and that was really really good and overall the film again is just presented very very nicely I'm, I'm surprised again it just didn't have that click but initially when it came out in theaters in fact it was a huge bomb when it did so and and to this day it's probably still hasn't recuperated the money that it was uh, made for. But again, people are discovering it here and there, and it's uh, definitely one of Robert De Niro's most underrated underperformances that he's had. He definitely um, plays it back a lot, but there's a lot in his uh, work that you can still see. So he kind of toned it down, in other words, from some of the other richer roles, but he still played every really scene. And then Wesley Snipes also did a really good job. I mean, some of his scenes just involve him being a simple guy, just trying to essentially play baseball and then work with his kid and so on. And that simplicity still takes a lot of effort to convey. And so I think he did a good job there. The bad parts associated with the film, only because I know of the novel itself, I think that there should have been more uh, stuff from the novel, stuff that would have really made more sense to the story. I'm thinking just because of the time involved, you know, the films can only be around two hours or so. It's not like you can have the entire novel filmed. Otherwise, you're looking at something that's 9, 10 hours plus. But no, in this case, I think they could have had some of the other scenes. Like Coop, remember that guy that Robert De Niro went to visit? His character, Gil, went to visit. Uh, I think he was in some junkyard, and he said that that was his childhood friend. That was the one who was playing with him in baseball, and they were talking about the old days, and he told him that he was 12 years old you know, basically get over it. In the novel, Coop actually has a whole other sub-story about him being some kind of wild man, some kind of nomad that lives out there in the woods, and then they go rob houses together, him and Robert De Niro's character, Gil, and that kind of leads more into Gil's psychosis being broken afterward because of what happens to Coop. So I think some of that stuff could have been within the novel. And again, from the novel into the film, and again, uh, anything involving Gil's character, I think there was a lot of missed opportunity there. But yeah, that's the only bad part that I could give uh, associated with this film. As far as the number of stars, I'll definitely give it four out of five stars. Um, it's still a movie that I watch at least maybe once every two years or so. And the same thing with the audiobook. I listen to it on my long drives here throughout Texas. Like, let's say when I go ghost, ghost hunting here and there especially since it's well read by Joe Mantegna. So it's, it's, a, it's a really great film. It's a really great novel. And it's a really great audiobook, And then, of course, also the soundtrack. So, yeah, four out of five stars. There could have been just a little bit of tweaks here and there that could have made it just that much better. That could at least have it be a perfect five stars. But I'm glad to see at least again that people are truly discovering it. But let me know what you think about this film, about the fan. Back in 1996, did you see it in theaters like I did? Did you catch it later on on VHS slash DVD? Were you able to see it on streaming services? Uh, by the way, I'll include the link for it below in case you wanted to rent it. And then that way you can catch it as well. And then it'll be a good opportunity to see everything that I'm talking about here. And then let me know what you guys think. Plus, seeing these scenes now, it's kind of funny to, to see how some of this stuff is dated. Like those car phones. And then also there was some really big cell phones that were featured within it. Like the big clunky ones, the bricks, in other words that people used to have back then. So it's kind of interesting to see some of that stuff dated now. But in any case, yeah, that's just my review, my movie podcast review associated with the fan. So all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.